I'm not here. It's on ah. 8 o'clock, everybody, and it's time for this week's Multi Monday. We are going to be looking at the milk slash sweet stout. Uh, same thing. Uh, they just call it different things. Uh, there might be, hopefully, hopefully when I get into reading about it, it will uh, actually bring up the reason why they once called it a milk stout, went away from that, and went to this wheat stout. So I want to welcome my panel tonight. Uh, we have Louisiana Beer Reviews. His real name is Ron Terrio. We have Thrash Metal Homebrew and Barbecue. Hi. We've got Beer Man. Hello. We have Michael Kormoroff, who is the Stout King. Hello. Drunken One. Miscellaneous Magnets. Alex, the Beer Master. We have Thomas Metal, 75666. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> and then we also have the Milk Stout Whiskey Scout. All right. Oh, right. <laughs> and myself, Bumpy Road. Um, yeah. I want to say hello to uh, the chat tonight. Uh, my name is Jeff. You'll never <laughs> guess his name. My name is Jeff. But I think he might like some apple. <laughs> oh, and Native Missouri says uh, his name is Jeff. So. I don't know. Is that uh, is that more of like Hello, a German, German spelling or something? Um, Burley Sullivan he says he has a dogfish milk stout. I did want to know if he was going to join tonight. If you are, I will be dropping the link um, for anybody that can get in because I I know that Ron will go and uh, be kind enough to go through his whole tasting and everything, and then drop for somebody else to get in. Um, Beer man's here. He's in the chat and on panel. It says, cheers, chat. Um, your name is Raul. <laughs> Raul. <laughs> <laughs> cheers, to everybody from Fresh. And uh, Julie jumps in. She says, hey, hi there, peeps. So well, I say cheers to Julie. Hey, cheers. Um, hey, uh, Burley looks like a homeless weirdo. That's okay. Oh, <laughs> that's not nice. <laughs> he said it about himself. I know. <laughs> As long as you bring said beer and you don't act like a little dick. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, all. Tommy Arth. Summer's fun. And Burley Sullivan. Not very presentable. Um, he's going to watch the stream and drink along. Um, please, wow. and comment comment on the, uh, the Dogfish Milk Stout. Let us all know about it, the ABV, all that, how it tastes to you. He hasn't had a haircut in months. Commerce Aussie's here. I am having a Saga Talk Brewing Company's Neapolitan Milk Stout. Ooh, have you had that one, Thrash? That's a good beer. Yeah, I've had one. Mm -hmm. I've had their uh, Blueberry Stout. That one is phenomenal. Yeah, I've had that. That's anything close to it. Yeah. With that beer, you can actually taste the chocolate, the vanilla, and the strawberry. They're all three predominant, and they stand alone. It's, it's, it's a pretty interesting beer. Wow. I recommend so trying it. All right, screw this. I'm going to go to liquor store. Beer back. <laughs> all right. Here, we'll give you time. I can move you to the bottom, too, if you need. Um, so before uh, we get into showing what uh, milk stout, sweet stouts we have brought tonight, I'm just going to read through some of uh, what I can find on the BJCP. They call it a sweet stout. Like I said they kind of moved away from the milk stout thing after uh, certain reasons in the UK. Uh, but overall impressions, a very dark, sweet, full-bodied, slightly roasty ale. This uh, can suggest coffee and cream or sweetened espresso. Uh, the appearance is usually very dark, black in color. Uh, it can be opaque. If not, it should be clear. Creamy tan to brown head. Um, some comments on this. Gravities are low in England. Higher and exported in U.S. products. Variations exist with the level of residual sweetness, the intensity of the roast character, and the balance between the two being the variables most subject to interpretation. Some versions in England are very sweet, low attenuation, uh, and low in ABV. Tenants Sweetheart Stout is 2%. <laughs> but Why? this this is an outlier wow. compared to the other examples. 
These guidelines mostly describe the higher gravity, more balanced export versions rather than the low alcohol, very sweet versions that many find quite difficult to drink. History. An English style of stout developed in the early 1900s, historically known as milk or cream stouts. Legally, the set designation is no longer permitted in England, but it's acceptable everywhere else um, or elsewhere. The milk name is derived from the use of lactose or milk sugar as a sweetener. Originally marketed as a tonic for individ, uh, in, invalids and nursing mothers. Um, so they didn't want yeah. people thinking that it was like super healthy to drink these. Um, <laughs> so, Good going. That's, uh, that's about it. Um, style comparison, I guess. Much sweeter and less bitter than other stouts, except the stronger tropical stout. The roast character is mild, not burnt like other stouts. Somewhat similar in balance to oatmeal stouts, alt beer, and... Albeit, I'm sorry, I read all beer, but it's albeit with more sweet. No all beer. Okay. All right. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, crack him over. How's everybody doing? <laughs> We're going to throw yeah. this over oh, to Jim Ontario. There he is. Now he's now back down in the stream. Back in the cell. All right. Legendary Ontario. Hi, everybody. I just stepped into the other room. Um, so happy Columbus Day. And um, I have the nitro milk stout. Not nitro. What am I saying? The left-hand milk stout, non-nitro. This is the original, 6% alcohol, <laughs> 25 IBUs. Um, the U6 malt Fridays plus rolled oats types of hops and they earth to ronald and it's all frozen all right there you go i heard him can y'all hear me all right no no uh, right hey, then you good, man. can you hear me all right now yes a little better yeah i can hear you I don't know why it's going in and out. My, I mean, I can hear y'all fine, man, but uh, it smells milky, like milky, chocolatey, roasted barley malt. I guess the oats are going to give it some uh, creaminess, slickness in the mouthfeel. Cheers. Cheers, Jay. Cheers. Cheers to you. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Sorry, I was breaking up earlier. Um, but like I said, they use six different malts, plus rolled oats, two hops, and the lactose. Um, it's got some pretty sharp bitterness for only 25 IBUs. It's coming across pretty kind of acrid, I guess you'd say. Yeah, acrid, like ashes, you know what I'm saying? Isn't that a um, town in Ohio, acrid? <laughs> You want the no, right hand or right? No. All right. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, Mouthfeel, not too slick or velvety. Body, medium. Finish, mostly dry. It's supposed to be so sweet, but um, hmm. is this thing really sweet? I guess you could say it's sweet. It's kind of not really that sweet. And it's um, it's kind of creamy, though. I guess the oats give it a little slickness. Not um, too much. Yeah, I like it. I think the nitro might be more to my tasting. But the can one, the can, not the bottle. Something about the can nitro, it comes out more nitro-ish, you know. Um, but Alex creamy. might do a blind taste. Yeah, more creamy. Alex might do a blind thing. Um, comparison. But I mean, for me, yes. I mean, give it a super four. Uh, let's back. About E3. Because I don't I mind the acronyms. Yeah. I don't mind the acrid nature. It's 
it would probably bother some. I'm always thinking like, would it bother other people? Um, I would prefer if it was a little more milky, stouty, but um, it's a it's a doggone good beer. And so 93, the price is right. I mean, you're not going to pay a fortune for this. And if you're just getting into stouts, it'd be a good place to start because it'd be kind of on the mellow side, wouldn't wear you out or anything. Uh, now, as far as uh, promos, and I want to wish everybody else uh, the best on your beer presentations tonight. So I'll be watching. So best wishes to everybody. Um, Wednesdays, just regular old wild card Wednesdays, so you don't have to bring anything specific. Um, then. Then I'm, tomorrow morning at Dawn Busters, I think it's going to be a pretty bad upset, but um, you don't know until you do the test. But I have John Barr Reserve Blend, Blended Scotch Whiskey, which is $23 a bottle at Total Wine. And then this little item here, this liter bottle is $8.99. You're thinking, oh, that must be sewage, you know. But no, it's $8.99, and I think it's going to win. I think the dance is going to beat the bar. But, of course, we'll have to see about that. So, thanks for letting me come on. And now, I'm getting off. Jay, take care. You, right, you too, right. thank, you, thank you for, uh, Cheers, for joining up tonight. Um, yeah, sorry that you're, you were kind of cutting in and out a little bit there during your feed. But. And I'm sorry I was doing that. I hope people could hear me. If not, you can just oh, no, wipe it out in editing. You're good. Right. You're good. <laughs> Hi, Ron. All right, cheers, Ron. Thank, Thank you. you. There we go. Aiming into obscurity. Hey. I'm going to go ahead and throw the uh, link bumping. into the uh, chat. So if there's anybody else that uh, wants to join up that has a milk slash sweet stout, please do. Um, now let's uh, go ahead and let um, the metal rash metal. Uh, Showcase his brew. We'll get through and get everybody showcasing their brews. Yeah, showcase and show, show. Yeah, that's a big word. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, this is a gold medal winner cream stout. It's a milk stout. And uh, this was at the 2017 Great American Beer Festival, Colorado. This beer is from uh, Boulder, Colorado. It's from Finkel and Garf. Whoa. <laughs> that's a mouthful. And it is a smooth, malty, chocolatey milk stout at 5.5%. It's a 36 IBU. And they call it everything. See, on the side, they say oatmeal milk stout. So, mm. oatmeal milk. Uh, six pack cost uh, $10.99. Mm. I love oatmeal stouts. They are delish. Oatmeal milk stout. Like oh, beer. Right off the bat, you got that khaki tan. Look at that thing. Uh, at the, I, I've already poured one earlier, and it starts off with real uh, tight, tight uh, frothy bubbles, but it goes into uh, some real stiff bubbles. Doesn't linger at all. It pretty much, <laughs> it's like a pillow, and you lay down, you put your head on, it goes, you know, same oh. thing. <laughs> Um, yeah. very opaque. Uh, around the edges, it's a little ruby looking, uh, medium, medium bubble. But yeah, there we go. Cheers. Looks like a nice one. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Very good. Very good. good. All right. Next on my hit list is. Oh, I'm gonna let him get his beer out of his cooler. Oh, sorry. Oh, it looks. It looks like there's no cork on this one. I think we're safe. So I got the uh, I got one from Belching Beaver uh, out of San Diego, California. I had their uh, a can version of it, but it wasn't a nitro. This is the nitro milk stout at 5.3 percent. Um, the the canned version, the nit non nitro, was very unpleasant. Um, I'm hoping I'm hoping the nitro will soften that up and allow me to. I'm, ho I'm hoping <laughs> that that it will go a little smoother this time. Sorry. But <laughs> I'm just watching that bottle going back and forth. I'm like, watch out again. We are good. My, my comment. Throw that thing. Okay. There we go. 
Oh, dang, dang, dang. Wow. <laughs> <That's a great laughs> <point. Yeah. laughs> the, the nitro pour. Wow. <laughs> got a bell and everything. It was like uh, Wild Card Wednesday. <laughs> Michael. Oh, jeez. Yeah. No, uh, yeah. I like that. I meant that in a good way. Sorry. I just thought that oh, was no, great. no. James um, Madonna. There you go. Yeah, glass looks uh, familiar. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. You guys are welcome. Very nice looking uh, nitro head. Very like <laughs> very, um, just very tan looking head. Finger. Um, that nice cascade effect was beautiful. Um, at first, I was like, "What is this?" All soapy head, and then it started to do its thing. So nice dark chocolate uh, beer all around. Can't see through it. Opaque. Beautiful. And it smells like peanut butter. Cheers. It smells like the other one I didn't like. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cheers. Uh, moving on to Michael Comer. Comer. Okay. This is from Glasgow, Scotland, in the UK. And it's their Tenant's Milk Stout, 11.2 ounces at 5% and 37 IBUs. It's an export stout. So like Bumpy said before, the one that's brewed in Scotland is lower alcohol. The head was bigger when I first poured it. I've been sipping on it, but it's a beige head now that's about a third of a finger. So it's if you swill it, it rebuilds, but not as big as it was at the beginning. I will come back around to give you a descriptive, descriptive comments when it's my turn. Yeah, that looks good. Thank you, Mike. The man, the myth, the legend. Hi! What are y'all doing here? Okay. okay. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me in, Sir Jesse, a lot. Um, uh, okay. I have uh, Coco Anejo. Uh, this is from uh, Hop Fusion Brewing Company out of Fort Worth, Texas. It is a 8.99% coconut milk stout. It says on the label, pardon if it doesn't focus, you get the idea though. And uh, yeah, it's kind of cold yet, but uh, we'll crack it up and get it pouring into my uh, cleanest dirty glass. <laughs> coconut <laughs> milk stout. That sounds good. All right, here we go. Yeah, dude. It's kind of a short glass, so I'm going to have to pour it twice, I guess. All right, looks like it's pouring up really nice, like just right away. Hoo wee. It's my half beer, half head, huh? Uh, pour it pour us up with a finger and a half head, and uh, yeah, smells like boogers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. Come on, come on. Uh, yeah, yeah, chocolate, and uh, uh, I'll go around to get, get the rest of the comments later. I've already I've actually uh, already started drinking one of these before, so I got some pretty good ideas as to how this goes. Um, I dare, I want to say it was like 10 99 a four pack. But uh, for your uh, 9% beer, uh, we'll see how it goes in the comments. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Right. Thank you Dio. Thank you. And we're going to pass this one off to uh, uh, <laughs> Miscellaneous Magnets. Oh, yeah, man. Cheers, guys. Oh. All right. So I got something from Florida out of Bradington, Florida. Darwin Brewing Company. God, I wish Paul was here. Uh, this is the uh, Llama Mama Milk Stout, 6.9 percent, 27 IBUs. There's no no date, so good thing it's a stout. <laughs> right. All right, let's get into this thing. Gotta put the date on the bottle, guys. All right. Uh. Cheers to Greg. Can't see it. All right. She is. Looks about just like uh, what everybody else is working with. Dark, opaque. Right. Yep. Tight knit bubbles. There you go. Llama mama. Llama. Lava, lava, lava. Yikes. <laughs> All right, Alex, are you ready? Yes, I am, my friend. In well, I got the uh, the milk stout from Life uh, Left Hand Brewing, and I've already had this before a while ago. So, um, 
I'm going to pour this up and see what it's all about. Let me get the. What did you say? Uh, right hand brewing company? Yeah, left hand brewing company. No, no, right hand, yeah. Okay. Sorry about the noise. Forgive me about that, people. Oh, I thought you had a Velcro top on that one. Okay. There we go. It already smells good. Mm. That's poor Snickland. Oh, the sound. It's an Alex pour. It's a clear four finger head, oh. and it's nice and dark. And uh, slow pour. I will give you all the notes and what the taste is all about when I come come back around. But it smelled pretty good when I first opened up the bottle, though. So I can tell you that. All right. Nice. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, nice slow. Thank, thank you, Alex. And we are off to. The Thomas Meadowland. Hello, people, and thank you for stopping by the Bumpy Road channel of YouTube. Uh, is anybody bored of Left Hand yet? Well, no, I got a little like different it. treat from Left Hand. I got the Milk Stout Nitro. Ooh, I'm glad I went a little different. Cool. So this is the same 6% beer, and they tell you to pour this at 40 to 45 degrees Fahrenheit and then drink it at another 10 degrees warmer, 50 to 55. In a stout glass, I'm going to use a uh, nonic style pint glass. And they say to uh, open this beer and pour hard right down the center. So I am going to get that going. The cans have the nitro widget in them. The bottles don't, but just like with Guinness, they do something to the, to the beer to add more of that CO2 inside of the beer where they don't need to have the widget. Something like that. So I'm going to pour this almost like Beer Man did. I think, I think I've had the canned version of that. I've had the, the canned version many, many is better. I've never seen the canned version. Let's see what this is doing. It's doing that. Wow. Ooh, that's really nice. Oh, nitro. Pretty. Well, that, All right. Here's that's your, pretty uh, actually. Here's your screensaver. Ooh, yeah, right. like there's a little bit of some sediment or particulates in that particular beer. Huh. Uh -huh. But it is got that uh -huh. nice dark, dark, dark kind of. And it, it's not CO2 color. that they use. Yeah. And then there goes the head settling nice and creamy and thick looking like a Guinness. So uh, it's the word. I mean, it looks the part of a great stout. We will uh, explore the uh, milk stout from left hand, the nitro, when uh, I return. All right. Very good. Ooh, that's, You're good. that's right. Yeah. They, they charge those bottles with nitrogen, hence the. Nitro, not CO2. Correct. All right. I have the Boulevard Brewing's Steep Drop. It's brewed with fair trade, small batch coffee. It's a nitro cold brew milk stout. And I had it yesterday morning on Stout Sunday. And it's uh, one of these ones like the Budweiser. You invert the can three times and you steep pour it 180 degrees, which is vertical. It's 5.2% alcohol by volume. And it was like 2021 is the date on the bottom. Yeah, 26 January 2021. I have so, to try that one, Robert. I, I love Boulevard Brewing. Yeah. yeah. They are. Oh, I didn't spin the can. Do, yeah. do the center thing. It'll probably straighten itself out. I don't think it's going to do it because I didn't spin the can. I got in a hurry and I was listening to Thrash and my brain doesn't process well. Watch it. Oh. <laughs> right at the top. Wow. Wait a minute. It's doing so. It's doing its thing. There you go. Do a little bit. You get an action. Do a thing. Get an action in the center. Yeah, it's, it's doing some, but it's can't see through it. It's, it's <laughs> opaque. For five point two percent, I'm surprised it's as dark as it is. But it gives a nice chocolate colored head, colored head on top of it, and little milk chocolate colored head, and <clears throat> it's gonna be. Well, we'll find out in a little bit. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess that means it's my turn. First, we got to laugh out loud at Paul, though. <laughs> oh, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, Close enough. All right. Hi, Monica. Well, cheers, Monica. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, all right. What I am bringing is from 
some brewing company. They are out of York, Maine, and this is their Whoopie Pie Stout. Whoopie Pie. It is a milk stout aged on cocoa nibs and vanilla beans. 6.3% ABV. And uh, no born on date. It wasn't born, it was hatched. It wasn't made. It wasn't made. Yeah, I had a dirty glass, but I did have this beer in it earlier. So. Oh, I had grown on that thing. Whoa, wow. Wow. <laughs> that's, not, that's not a nitro beer. Wow. Hey, it is now. Smoking. Holy jeez. Oh, wow. <laughs> Very uh, tight uh, mocha colored head. The beer itself is, uh, well, it's got some like caramel brown, reddish hues at the bottom. Um, it's brown. It's brownish. Darker brown. 18 finger head. It looks like, and pretty soon this head will go down and there'll be more beer in the glass. Hey, hey, hey legendary Bumpy, I drank that beer earlier uh, this year, didn't I, my friend? That was a good beer. Did you? Yes, you remember, or from you, one or the other. Was it this one? It may have been this one, or it may have been the peanut butter. They have a peanut butter whoopee stout. It might have been the peanut butter one. It was, you, you yeah. said woofy pie, though. I don't know if it was the woofy peanut butter pie, one, yeah. but maybe it was woofy pie. All right. Well, I mean, let's uh, bring it back to, uh, to the thrash so he can go through his aromas and taste. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. As you can see, uh, it's maintaining uh, a ring, which is nice. It's got really good lacing. Um, it's actually not a bad, bad milk stout. It's oatmeal milk stout. Made some notes. Um, this does have a born on date on the can. It's uh, 826 uh, this year. Uh, ABV is 5.5. IBU is 36. Uh, like I said before, it was a gold medal for cream stout at the 2017 Great American Beer Festival. And I can't read my own damn writing. Hold on. <clears throat> All right. All right. On the site, it's black, you know, just as a regular stout is. You can't see through. It's murky. On the outlines of it, if you hold a light up to it, you get that kind of ruby around the, around the corner on it, which is nice. Um, the beer's clarity is opaque. Beer's head was tan. Large bubbles, is frothy and dissipated. Uh, not too quick, but it was enough. It all turned into large bubbles and just popped away, and it was it was done. Um, on the taste, cheers. 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 You get that roasted uh, bittersweet with a bit of chocolate and coffee. They kind of balance out on there. Um, yeah, very nice malt on it. Uh, the intensity is balanced. It's, it was um, it, it's straightforward with the with the bitterness. I think it's more from the roast of the malts than uh, any of the hops. Um, the beer's finish is, is dry, sweet, uh, slightly bitter. Um, the beer's mouthfeel is smooth and creamy. The beer's carbonation level at the moment is light. Uh, it was kind of a medium light uh, when you first poured it. And the beer's body is medium, and it actually, at the end, it just thins out. So um, it's a good beer. Um, I'm, I'll, I'll give my score when we come back around. But it, um, I, this wouldn't make gold for me. The, this would be lucky if it made uh, maybe uh, bronze or silver. You know what I mean? But, you know. It depends on who's who's rating it, who's using the BJCP on uh, getting getting the correct uh, number for this for it to be a gold. But yeah, um, I had one before. I did the rating scale. I've had a lot of time to kind of chew on this, literally. And uh, yeah, we'll come back around. Cheers, y'all. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers to the chat. All right, and uh, nice. let's see. I wrote down BM. That can mean a bunch of different things, well, but to us, it just means it's beer not man. beer on me, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, um, man. I just I'm gonna go off my notes because I mean I can tell you right now 
this this is if you want to talk about acrid, uh, off, very unpleasant, uh, not good, not good, uh, like as if you were uh, eating um, sweet and low from the packet, that chemical, uh, peanut buttery. Blech. Like I can't. I, the other one I had the other day was more natural peanuts. Um, it wasn't uh, like a peanut butter sweet fake uh, flavor. But now going off the off the hardcore notes I've got here um, on the nose, we'll start. Uh, well, look on the look. Actually, I poured a two finger khaki head. A uh, nice ca uh, cascading medium rising bubbles. Uh, dark chocolate brown. Uh, roasty looking, opaque, can't see through it. Lacing is great. Um, well, not great. It's actually it's kind of spotty and leggy. It, it shouldn't be leggy. It's only a 5.3. Um, so on the nose, I got another butter cookies, like a fake peanut butter or a sweet candied peanut butter. That grainy, sweet, salty cookie comes out from the nutter butter. Uh, very nutter buttery, <laughs> uh, but pungently unpleasant, uh, acrid, if you want to put it that way. Even in the nose, right away you were turned off. Um, uh, it's the same as the unnitroed one, but the nitro one's a hella better. Um, it's just softer. The flavor, nut nutter butter comes out again, peanut cookies, that, that sweet uh, candied peanut buttery filling they have in those cookies. Sweet, milky, soft mouth feels. When I, there were some good things about the beer. Medium, if you can get past that nastiness. Um, the medium, it was a medium light body, even though it was a stout, 5.3. It's a more sessionable, lighter feel. Um, though you did have the toasty flavors, the roasty, uh, uh, very low carbonation, uh, medium finish, a tangy and roasty finish. Um, the, the sweet peanut butter sticks around in the end, though, and it's just terrible. Almost an acrid or unbearable or undrinkable peanut sweetness, like I was saying, uh, like sweet and low sweetener. It's sticky and molasses comes out, espresso, uh, graham crackers, um, slight milky chocolate but with that unbearable acrid feel again uh makes you want to gag it's uh it's like i said it's better than the unnitro one the unnitro version um so i have a score this was uh definitely not something i'll get again it's not drinkable in my opinion so um right on cheers Damn. Beer man. thanks bumpy wow beer man thank you and now we got uh i think it's our only it's our only foreign milk stout tonight Coming from Michael Cormoran. Okay, from Scotland, the capital city of Glasgow. And it's a 5% milk stout. You see the cute little cow on the bottle. Man, like me. Um, the Ten and T. Ten, it's got a pretty good reputation. I think they it's Caledonian Brewing is what they are occupied under now. Um, so it's 5%, 37 IBUs. As you can see, I've been sipping on it from the beginning. The head is still maintaining itself beige at about very slim head now, but it was a little bit higher when it was higher up. Very dark color. It's opaque. You can't see through it if you put it up to light. You can only see at the head level. It doesn't go through the beer. Maybe little kind of red highlights you can see through direct light. I know Drunken One sometimes takes out his light and does it right behind i don't have a light like that to do it but maybe some red highlights through a direct light but let me get the nose on it for you get a little slight kind of smoky kind of nose and it seems kind of sweet a little bit of chocolate kind of like um bitter bittersweet chocolate that's about it for nose let me taste it cheers everybody Cheers, Michael. Wow. Okay, a little bit more taste in it. I'm getting kind of like a caramel kind of taste as well. Also kind of um, nutty a little bit. Kind of, I'm trying to describe what the nuttiness is. Um, kind of like a toasted kind of nut. I was just thinking... Sometimes you feel like it, not sometimes you don't. But <laughs> this, this one, this one is toasted more than than anything. Maybe like a toasted almond kind of flavor. You get the chocolate in it as well. Um, 
there you can get some of the roasted malts, but there's certainly more background. It's not like some of the other stouts that we've gone through on our other reviews where it's intense. It is 37 IBUs, but it's not outwardly bitter. There is bitterness, but the malt and the bitterness are kind of countered, so it's kind of like a very balanced beer. I'm actually enjoying it. It's only 5%, so there's really not much in um, it's sessionable. I'll come back and have a score for you when we come back around. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. Uh, there you go. Mike, Mike, Mike. And now is the middleman, so I didn't skip miscellaneous. We added D1. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. That's coming yeah. up next. All right. Hey, back again. All right. So, all right. So, we got the, to recap just a bit, Hop Infusion brand, Coco Anehu. All right. Uh, you know, my uh, my snipper doesn't work so good. We'll do the Michael Krummeroff uh, torch behind the thing thing. What dark as can be. Up the light works. Can't tell, though. Wow. <laughs> There we are. Uh, okay, so the head dissipated quickly on the one I poured a while ago. I did top it up, and uh, it just didn't come back like the first time I poured it. Not sure why. Um, in the aroma, uh, uh, chocolate and, and uh, coffee, uh, uh, like a bit like a bitter chocolate, like a baker's chocolate almost. Um, uh, very dark and, and roasty. Obviously, uh, you can tell by the aroma. And uh, uh, there's no alcohol on the nose, or at least I'm not finding any. Um, as for the the flavor, uh, I found it to be uh, quite sticky and sweet. I mean, that's not really a flavor, is it? But um, uh, well, sweet is a flavor. Uh, sticky is the way it uh, it is on your lips when you when you're drinking it. Um, there's a bit of alcohol in the taste, which is uh, would be understandable, being that it's a eight point nine point eight 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 point nine 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 nine. They almost a nine percent, so you get a little bit of that. Um, not pleased with no born on date. Uh, if it's got a born on date, it's written and encrypted or whatever. Cause the last numbers are one zero, so I don't think this is from two thousand ten. Um, it uh, the coconut that it says it has in here seems a bit hidden. I didn't get a whole lot of the coconut. Um, you get a little taste of coffee. My notes are kind of scrambled. Um, it's low carbonated. It's not very carbonated whatsoever. Uh, you couldn't probably see the bubbles even if it was because it's jet black, like you see. Um, 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 um. Let me jump down here. It has no lacing. I, I didn't. It doesn't have any alcohol legs or anything like that. Um, it uh, finishes quite wet. Um, it it kind of leaves that, that that phlegm in the back of your throat with the whole flavor. It has a medium to full mouthfeel. Uh, it's bitter, I think, because of the the dark malt. That's why it's kind of bitter. It's probably not because of the hops, because uh, generally, like a stout only has like one hop drop, and it's just at the beginning just to uh, combat all that sweet uh, work. Okay, and then um, uh, uh, okay, and then uh, I think it's better when it's warm. Um, uh, let me read a little bit off of the can. It says, uh, we started with our Imperial Milk Stout, called First Slippers, that particular one. And it says, silky smooth with notes of roasted hazelnut, dark chocolate, and toffee, and then aged on roasted coconut. Mind-blowing coconut infusion, it says right there on the can. So, uh, uh, yeah, I've got some numbers together. Uh, kind of, I'm pleased with it enough, I guess. Uh, I've already seen the numbers on uh, Beer Advocate, but I... I don't know if I'm gonna follow those numbers. <laughs> yeah, I, I know why. It's because your mind is blown. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 right. has to be. It's not all the can. didn't you say that you didn't taste too much of coconut though? Yeah, I really didn't. I mean, when it's when it says uh, uh, coconut milk stout, you think there'd be a lot of coconut. Um, I mean it. Mm. Maybe a little bit. I mean, the flavor is there. It's just not. Uh, it's not very pronounced like you think it might be. And uh, yeah, the, the mouthfeel is kind of a medium to full. So I guess the whole lactose thing is working. And uh, it, it's not unpleasant in that manner. It, it's uh, easy enough to drink like that. Um, awesome yeah, they're all, all hidden. So yeah, that, that could be dangerous. I guess if you like your stouts, <laughs> almost a nine percent oh. beer. Oh, I love my stouts. You know that, drunk one. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. All right, and now we're gonna go over to. Alex, the beer master, so I we will, can tell him, hey, fuck you we're, coming, up. We're, hey. Coming back, we're coming back to you right after we go to Miscellaneous Magnets. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Watching you. 
All right. Uh, so for the <laughs> for the llama mama. All right. Um, you put it up to the light. It is fairly dark. Get a slight slight red hue at the very bottom of the glass. You can barely barely see it. I don't have a flashlight. Uh, as you can see, no legs, no none of that. I don't even have the little ring there. It's just oily, which not complaining. So on the nose, uh, had deep roasty toasty malts are dominant. Uh, did have a malt like a milk chocolate presence on the nose. Um, slight coffee brown bread was what I was getting out of this. Um, not not too shabby. I mean, that's pretty much what you're looking for. Uh, mm -hmm. The taste, though, um, chocolate and caramel with a with a hearty coffee backbone to this. Um, it's definitely a full body beer. It's uh, it's viscous, gets all through the palate. It's um it's rich. Uh, it's oily. Um, I've heard the word come up a couple times tonight. Uh, acrid. Um, this is a slight bitter burnt taste to it. Um, it's not too off putting. I mean it seems to work its way through um not as sweet as you would think for a sweet stout or a milk stout um no dry finish i mean it's not nothing fancy um and for 6.9 percent uh there's absolutely no alcohol presence in this so this could be a little bit dangerous if you wanted to drink a sixer but yeah. other than that not too shabby i gotta have to think about a score i'm gonna polish this off cheers Miscellaneous. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers guys. Man. Cheers. Yeah. All right. And now for reals. We're gonna go to Alex's experiment. Not really aliens. All right. Uh thanks again, your legendary Bumpy Road, for letting me join hmm? every Monday. Um this is very dark, um, very nice frothy head, and um smells pretty good. Let's give it another taste. Cheers. 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 Mm. Um, the mouthfeel to me was a little light, I think. But it also has a little creaminess, too, um, which is what I like. Um, it's because it's called milk stout. It should have a little creaminess. Um, so... Yeah, I'm really enjoying this. I would get this again. Yeah. Uh, Rabbi, um, no bitterness. No bitterness whatsoever. Um, a little bit of dryness. Um, a little bit of smokiness, because I like smokiness anyway. So regardless, it would be delicious either way. Um, I wish it would have more smokiness, though, because I like because it kind of reminds you of the um, the fire. Uh, what's it called on the campfire and all that good stuff, especially this time of year, going into the winter and the fall and stuff like that. So it'd be good, you know what I mean? Alex, you should look for a Roush beer. R A U C H. Those are smoky. Roush. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to take a look at that. I probably like it because I do like smoky beers in, in some occasions. So mm -hmm. this beer is uh, pretty tasty, though. So is it okay if I get my rating, or are we going back around? Yeah. What's the deal here? Let's... No, yeah. Uh, okay. All right, so well, we're going to go back around again, but if you want to give it now, that's fine, too. Oh, no. Okay. I'm, I'm going to keep sipping on this. I'm going to keep sipping on this, okay. and then I'll, I'll yeah. give you the rating. But it's very right. tasty so far. So appreciate you. Yeah, if you do a premature rating, you will drop. Oh no, it's gonna be, a, it's gonna be a, it might be a higher rating because I like the creaminess of this beer. So yes, don't worry, it's gonna be a higher yeah, very rating. Very good. Oh man, now you just keep on sipping. Appreciate you, Trish. Keep sipping. Appreciate you. <laughs> All yeah, right, I'm not keep to, sipping the hey, <laughs> You'll be tossed. That's what I'm saying. Heading to Thomas Metal 75. All right. Uh, oh, uh, caution. Contents under pressure. Keep cold. Avoid shaking. Point away from self and others when opening. Only use a bottle opener. Pour hard. Now, that's for beer man. Oh, yes. <laughs> 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 beer man, including the 
This is the nitrogen, nitro version in the bottle of the milk stout. I think it was 10, 11, or between 11 and 12 for the six pack of butt. Not super bad. Um, so yeah, here is the pour as of right now. And I mean, it's got stuff in it. Holy <laughs> oh, yeah. that. It does not taste as sludgy as it may appear, people. So that <laughs> right. is okay. That's that is the very best okay. sediment I've ever seen in one of those beers. I don't yeah. know, but it tastes uh whatever. It tastes pretty good for what it is there. So I can look past that. It is a nice medium roasty barley malt. Uh it's got some dark um milk chocolatey notes and light coffee notes. And there's a bit of a fudgy note I detect on the nostrils as well. And when you drink said beer, and cheers to you all. Damn, that's good. Good beginner beer if you're getting into craft beer. I would recommend this one. Very dark, milk chocolatey, fudgy with a light coffee. You know, I mean, the coffee is 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 very subdued in this particular beer, but it is there for a little bit. I almost get a slight peanut buttery taste at the end as it goes into its drying quality. It's semi-sweet from the added lactose. There is a perceived perceivable amount of sweetness to it there. Um, it's a medium roastiness and it's, and it's lending to, it's lending the beer to finish. Like I say, on the dry side, I think, and there's no lingering lactose sweetness in the finish whatsoever. So it's really great that one it's in the mouth. And, and when you're tasting the beer, you're getting that good, rich, sweet lactose and the milk chocolatey notes. And then when it dries and then when you finish the beer, it, it is pretty dry, not bone dry, but it's pretty dry. So it's not um, too much, too much for the palate at all. The mouthfeel itself is on the light side of a medium body, and it's a super creamy mouthfeel from that nitrogen. But I think overall, it is a semi-sweet beer. And there's no, there's no real aftertaste. You don't get a film left in your mouth from the lactose. You're not getting any real chalkiness to it. You're not getting any real lactic, like souring notes from it. It's super drinkable, and it's and it really does drink like a Guinness draft with just a slightly heftier body. And I mean, for at six percent, the beer's at it, it's drinking way lower than that. So, real good, easy drinking beer. I guess you could sort of call it uh, refreshing, but I think I would want even more of something like a Guinness draft to be even more refreshing. But it's crisp. And for what it is, it is actually on the clean side. So not too shabby, folks. Real good. All right. Very good. Very good. Nice. And uh, I see yeah. uh, someone that is holding up their glass. Let's see how long they can hold it. Oh, no, wait. It's sitting down. Never mind. Let's just bring him in. <laughs> <laughs> it's floating. Nice. All right. I had this yesterday morning on Stout Sunday. And uh, first thing, when you when you take a drink of it, Jeez. it's a light body. It's almost, it's a little thin. I said watery. Really, it's not watery today. I'm not noticing the wateriness today, as I always have. The coffee chocolate play on this is almost like, and it's sweet. It's almost like a Starbucks mocha latte thing. Nice. I mean, it really, the coffee's done very well in this. It's not leaving that super swamped, super bitter coffee. At least a nice light bitterness on the side of the tongues. And it's the sweetness kind of turns. The thing I find unique about it is it does have a caramel flavor. And it does very well with the caramel flavor. But there's like a light... And the best way I can describe it is like a real sugary plum, a fresh plum that's real sugary. It's kind of got a little citrus almost, tastes sort of like that. It doesn't really, I can't say it really honestly tastes like the plum, but if you think about what's left over, that kind of sweet feel that a plum gives you, it's the same. I mean, it comes across the same to me. So overall, it's very sessionable, 5.2%. Since it's not such a heavy bodied beer or stout, you could actually drink quite a few of these and enjoy them at 
it wouldn't weigh you down or be super heavy on you. So uh, we'll go ahead and move on. And that pretty much sums it up. I like it. I'll let you know that much. Maintains it good. I like that. Nice. Nice. You hold that like a whiskey glass. <laughs> I have a lot of experience there. <laughs> right on. All right. So we will come back around. Everybody can give their scores, shout outs, and all that. And uh, I guess it's my time to talk about some brewing company. Um, um, <laughs> so, I mean, as I've been drinking on it, it does leave some fantastic lacing along the way. Uh, <laughs> um, still maintains that nice little bit of head around the uh, top, thin layer there. I can probably generate a larger head. I swirling it. I'm not very good at doing this. I usually slosh and it just kind of. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. The, uh, the aromas. On there. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's got uh, some chocolate notes in there. There's a little bit of a, a slight roastiness to it. Not quite going to like a real coffee type aroma, but a little bit of a, a roasty presence, uh, like a roasted barley type. Barley, barley, barley. The uh, vanilla beans and stuff that they put in here, that doesn't really shine through in the nose at all. But there is a little bit of a brown bread crust aroma in it. Um, it smells decent. Um, I've already been drinking on it, but first, first sip, cheers. 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 Cheers, Paul. So, yeah, it's got like a medium body, kind of cre uh, creamy mouthfeel to it. It may have been because I swirled it around. I think I knocked some of the carbonation out. Um, but yeah, uh, kind of a soft, soft palate to it. Um, kind of a low, or high, high low carbonation to a very low medium carbonation in it. It's not super spritzy. Um, bit of that uh, kind of semi sweet uh, chocolate note. The um, kind of a little bit of that roasty, roastiness does come through along with a little bit of that kind of the brown bread crust and uh i do notice this is probably from the vanilla bean versus being from the lack uh lactose that's in it but uh it does have this almost whoopie pie um cream filling flavor very 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 Ooh. slight there's it's kind of enough of a nuance to be like it does kind of have that whoopie pie cream filling so that that's in there and uh, yeah, I'll just kind of, um, there's a, a little slight bit of a chalkiness that's left on the uh, palate. Um, but I'll, uh, I'll think about a score for this and I'm gonna bring back everybody full screen. And we're just gonna go, we're gonna go as you sit and go ahead and uh, go ahead and give your scores and uh, any shout outs that you'd like to do as we go, go through. So Thrash, it's up to you to start. Cheers. 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 So I'm impressed, but not impressed with this beer. Like mm. I was trying to get out before. Um, it being a 2017 gold medal winner at the Great American Beer Festival. Mm -hmm. um, heck. Ugh. 91. 91. 91. We're getting a 91. Reason why I give it a 91, it's thin. Um, it's thin at best at the end. And not happy with that. When it comes to, especially if you're going to say it's oatmeal and a milk stout, you better have some body with that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Some cajones. You got all that happy stuff going on. You better finish very full body. It, it did not. It really disappointed right on the back end. So um, great taste, though. I think if they would have added more, uh, even uh, putting some care pills, some multidextrin in there, or uh, some more lactose, or some more oatmeal, or even flaked oats, that would have really brought it up. But it, it just was really flat at the end. But good taste. Um, I, I'd buy it again, but, you know, not soon. You know what I mean? Ooh, okay. <laughs> 
Cheers, Brian. All right. I think we're going to get a bad review from Beard Man, but let's hear it. Oh, shoot. Um, all right. So, <laughs> yeah. So, this, uh, this, uh, just the last finishing notes a hazelnut comes out speaking of nuts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that hazelnut definitely came out, and uh, maple syrup actually rings through it. Um, it's but it, God, like I said, accurate. It's just it's so unbearable. Uh, it says natural flavors added. I think they added natural PB. Not. <laughs> it was definitely a Borat moment. Um, just lingers forever. Uh, slight vanilla comes out when it warms. I did a terrible Borat, guys. Um, but uh, I'm gonna give my score of a 75 out of 100. Wow, wow. just it, I, I drank it because I paid for it, but I will not buy this again ever. Beer man, have you had anything good from Belgium? Uh, yeah, but I, I'm, I believe that I've had some things, but I can't remember what styles I've had from them. But this one I remember, and it was it's always rang a bell. <laughs> I I need to look up some more Belching Beavers stuff though. I've never heard of it, so it's something I've never. Yeah, heard I've never heard of Beaver. Beaver. They're out of San Diego. Yeah, they're they're they usually they they have a good reputation. Let's put it that way. So I don't know. Some people like their stuff. Some people don't. But this well, just one is they have terrible. Uh, beer made just because they have a good reputation doesn't mean one of their beers is not going to be good. I mean, it's sometimes... Oh, like, yeah. No, no, it's just one beer out of the batch. Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, their other beers are going to be good. But, yeah. Right. yeah. Just because yeah. it's one or two beers bad doesn't mean that the, the company's bad, you know? It's no, that, well, that's, that's, the, that's the same as police and policing. Um, yep. Yeah, so... so um, cool. Yeah, no, awesome. Yeah, that's that's my score. Um, hell yeah! Cheers. 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 Anything? Anything coming up this week? Oh, uh, just uh, beer cheese tomorrow, uh, eight o'clock Eastern. Uh, bring a pumpkin beer or a pumpkin or an October like style beer, something that has some kind of feel of uh, Halloween. Uh, if you can't find a pumpkin beer and a cheese of choice, and then I'm going to be doing, uh, I thought I did Amber's already, but I might be doing Amber Ales on my Wednesday at six nice. o'clock Eastern. So my beer and recipe. So oh, yeah. cheers. 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 <laughs> All right. I guess it's on to me. Huh? All right. <clears throat> well, I'm uh, one more time with this, what it is. Hot fusion. Coco Anejo. Um, Coco shines through the coffee. I don't know if it has coffee in it. It kind of tastes like coffee to me, like dark, rusty grains. Um, you know the drill for all these things. Uh, I said uh, roasted hazelnut. Eh, maybe if you're looking for it really hard. Um, uh, the coconut was kind of me. It was, I guess it tasted real, but it was very faint. But uh, so anyway, yeah. Um, uh, <clears throat> I can't blame it on the dirty glass. I don't guess it. it uh, there is not one bubble in there. It has no lacing. <laughs> Everybody has got a beautiful lacing on their glass. Well, mine didn't come through with that. Anyway, let's make a short story longer. Um, <clears throat> I give it now. Although the beer advocate gave it a uh, a ninety, uh, I'm. It's all right. It's better when it warms up. I guess uh, it's not near as good as some of the other stuffs I've had before, but. Uh, I'll give it an 89. I'm, I'm just, uh, uh, the alcohol starts to pop through when it warms up, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It reminds you that you're drinking a big beer, but, uh, there's just, uh, it's not, it's not on the tongue like it should be. It needs to be a little more iridescent and, uh, uh, have a little more bubble to it. So I'll go with an 89. Uh, would I buy it again? Yeah, I'd buy it again, I guess. I, you know, I'd, right, there's other, there's better beers out there. I'd much rather have a, uh, the uh, the milk stout the uh, which god damn it uh, dragon's milk I'd really have the the dragon's milk to be very honest yeah, it's a little more expensive but a lot more yummy um yeah. it's not terrible well, a lot more it too, yeah. would, would I, I buy a red bag case of it probably not you know I think this came in the four packs whereas the yeah, other one I was gonna do which uh, that's not so good don't try that. Over the moon. <laughs> that was okay. It's all right. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't care for that one so much. But uh, uh -oh. so <laughs> anyway, this is the better out of the two. Um, eighty-nine. And uh, for my channel, uh, I suck, and I don't have any videos anymore. 
You never, you never suck. <laughs> no, no, sir. Uh, no. Words to live Thank by. You. They don't say you that. Never, but you but you're a big but you're a big blowhard. Yeah, oh well, 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 well. <laughs> I'll, I'll get back around to it, guys. I got a lot of stuff going on in life right now. I'm trying I'm not trying to make excuses, just saying, but I, I will get back around to it. Uh thanks hey, for having drunk me. Drunk 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 drunk. 25 people that was watching one we go, man. 25 people. That's a lot of jokers. Wow, yeah. It's not an excuse, my friend. What you got oh, what no, you do is, it is your personal stuff. It's not yeah, an excuse. Uh, you're yeah, good. Pretty, pretty much empty in you here. Gotta now. Do, you got to do You got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. Alex, Alex coming in with the positive, the positive that. words tonight. I think he's yes. working to be a preacher. Left hands out. <laughs> I know it's true, though. It's true. Okay. Window love. All right. Miscellaneous. Time for miscellaneous. Are you ready with a number? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> um. I will, there's one other note I'm going to add to this beer. Um, when it did warm up, that, that burnt bitterness did go away. Um, so I guess that's that's positive. Um, I, I'm, I'm just going to stick with a 90. It's, it's, it's all right. I don't think it deserves less than that. But it's, it's nothing spectacular, nothing fancy. Would I buy it again? Probably not. Uh, I tell you guys all the time. That's usually why I don't drink local. Some of the beers down here, they're just they they try. Bless their hearts. But <laughs> my damn! <laughs> so they use the water from the Oki for Oki swamp. That, that could be it. <laughs> Oki for no what? Okay, Okeechobee. <laughs> oh. But um, mm-hmm. yeah. So um, that's yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'll do some shout outs. Um. Who didn't get hit up? Let's see here. Beer Chugs, Wednesday, 9 o'clock Eastern. Go check them out for What's Day BV. We always have a good time over there. Some of the yep. usual suspects go over there. Um, Stout Sunday with John and Nelly, 1030 Eastern Standard Time, AM, not PM. So get your big beers and join early. Um, me personally, um, I am going to go out Thursday. I'm going to make a magnet fishing video and i've been since i've been working a lot i haven't been able to get out i'm working on sorry about that i'm um, working on yeah. staying, in, staying in stream <laughs> i'm working on another channel it's called miscellaneous streams i'm going to be doing some some gaming um maybe some live streams maybe do some challenges over there something uh just because i'm working a lot and i don't have a lot of time to get out now so uh working on that i don't know we'll see where it goes if not i still have fun playing around over there so cheers guys cheers cheers, cheers. Yeah, cheers yeah, right. I think I hit everybody up in the in the chat to drop links to everybody's channel. So, mm-hmm. yeah, thanks thanks for doing that as well. No, no problem. Um, so yeah, if you go back through the chat, uh, if you're interested in anybody that's up on panel, um, miscellaneous did drop everybody's uh, channel links. So I think you have to kind of like highlight, copy and paste it or however. Yeah, you have to do it anymore, isn't it? yeah, I don't know. It's worth it. But uh, yep, Alex, nice. Well, I'm gonna have to give this beer. It's a very tasty beer. I'm gonna give this beer a 92. 92 is a very tasty beer. Uh, it's not gonna get a hundred, but it will get a 92 because I like the flavor and all that. And it's not too, not too bad. And it's nice, uh, sessionable beer. So I would get this guy. Nice. So, nice. Very tasty beer. Hmm. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. At least I try to do my food, What's Food Friday, Alex? All right. Well, Food Friday is cheesesteaks and beer. Hmm. You can make your own cheesesteak. You can make your own cheesesteak. You can buy your cheesesteak. I have steakums. So I'm going to be making my cheesesteak. Nice. So you can do I that. Knew, I knew that. You, you, can make your own, you can make your own beer. You can buy your beer. Yep. I don't know how to make beer, but uh, I appreciate you. Keep it up, Alex. My question before. is: Are you gonna be Are you gonna be making your cheesesteaks in your air fryer? No, 
No. Air fried oh. cheesesteak, huh? <laughs> yeah, <good. laughs> I guess I'm, I'm up with the decor. Yes, sir, sir. Okay, as this is warming, the 37 IBUs are coming through more, so it is getting more bitter. Mm. That's not a bad thing, though. I do really like this a lot. And it means that if I could get a hold of more Scottish and UK stouts, I would definitely try them. Um, I'm going to give this a 95, which is the highest score that anybody's given. Wow. I mean, the head has not got, you know, it was, it was fairly large when I poured and then it went down to this, but it's holding it. So the um, lacing is nice and, you know, it, you can tell it's a quality beer, whatever. This is the export version. So um, I guess I, I don't really want to try the 2.2% version. That <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> that cost you a lot of money. <laughs> but I, I, on the internet, I saw they had another one, another stout, which may not have been a milk stout. It might have been a straight stout. It was 4.7 from the same company. I would, I might like to try that because it probably would have similarities. But this is, this is really good. And um, I think that if I see another milk stout, I've tried the left hand from another smaller brewery. I would like to try it because the style is kind of nice. I like the style. But um, I'm going to give it a 95, which is a solid A. Nice, nice. Yes. Uh, Wednesday on Jay's channel, as always. And it's actually, Jay actually has come up with the early of the month themes through next June. So, wow. Coming on yeah. to the month. Jay, yeah. Yeah. Let's get through the winter first. Here we go. So, um, the first is this, there's a, the first week of the month, there's a style that he does. Otherwise, it's wild card for all the other weeks. Awesome. So this up so uh, this Wednesday will be a wild card. Oh yeah. Yep. I think it's right. he, he even so allows you don't even have to bring a beer to the wild card. You can bring any. I know, but I, I got I got humiliated for not bringing a beer. No god. Uh, what did you bring? Would you bring a glass of milk? I forget what I brought as a whiskey or tequila or I don't remember. Sweet tea. Everybody started making fun of me, so I went and got a damn beer. Uh, <laughs> Jesus, come on, people. All right, Eric. No, Eric. Find something better to do with your time than humiliate this guy. All right, it's so awesome. I don't know, again, what's up with all of that, but oh, it's not subtracting from the beer's flavor one bit, and it doesn't have anything to do with uh, – a chewy, chalky mouthfeel. So we're doing all right. Beer Advocate's giving this... Um, oh, I got to show you the bottom one more time. This is the Milk Stout Nitro, 6% from left hand. I never saw that um, before. And I didn't even mention this, but this thing says it is best by... It looks like it says 18, 18, 20, 20, but I'm guessing that says that's a 12, 12, 18, 20, 20. Not a really good dating system on there. It's kind of hard to read, but... Beer Advocate gave it a 93. Um, overall, for a beer, they're giving it a 96 and a 99 in the style on rape beer. I think I'm going to stick with uh, Beer Advocate and say a 93 on this one. I think um, I, I think I do like this beer a little bit better than the original Left Hand Milk Stout, and I think it's a really good beginner introductory beer for novices in get, trying to get into – beer and trying to get into other things than your in your bmc kind of light lagers adjunct lagers it is a really good step if you're not a really big hop head you're gonna like this even if you don't really think you're gonna like really really sweet beers it does some of that up front but then it's a nice dry finishing beer and it's got really good um drinkability to it i don't really think you're gonna go wrong with this too much so yeah, pretty nice stuff. And um, Thomas Metal 75, I do the Mash Who's Beer Reviews for a shout out here. I will see you all on Wednesday for the Beer Jugs What the ABV. Coming up next. I will, I will suggest about, about that, that beer, I would suggest getting it out of the can. It's a much mm. better yeah, product. I would try that. Yeah, hell yeah. Well, I've never and, had and, a, and a you get six you get sixteen ounce cans instead of twelve ounce bottles. Yep. Sixteen is a 
plus. All right. Find it, folks. More beer is more better. I really don't. I really don't like nitro in in the bottle, other than Guinness. To be honest with you, they just don't seem to have that that umph like they do when they come out of the can with the widget. Yep. I don't know. I would yeah. agree. I should have tried mine out of a can because that was terrible. <laughs> yeah. I think you just need to hang that beer up, dude. Just I think move so on. too. Jeez. Move All right. on. And we're back to mine. So I really I like the coffee notes in it. I don't get a lot of lactose in it or much of anything, but it has a nice sweet barrier that balances with the coffee and the chocolate flavors you get in it. And you know, I I like that portion of it, but the thin wateriness and 5.2% alcohol by volume, I can only give it I can only give it an 89. I'm gonna stick with the same score I gave it yesterday morning. But it's very sessionable, and I do enjoy it. Yes, I would buy it again because I do like it in that aspect. But when I think of a stout, I like 7% or more of my stouts. Yeah. Call them spoiled or whatever. Yeah. But this, this, is, this is just dark beer. I mean, you know, dark coffee-flavored beer. It's not really what I consider a stout personally. So anyway, that's my two cents, and I'll stick with that. All right. Any uh, any plugs? Yeah, I'll be putting out a video. I keep forgetting to. I've already got it edited. I didn't put it out this morning. I'll try to do it in the morning. So, so I'll have Robert, another. Is that your uh, inspection locker behind you? No, that's my wife's locker. And my <laughs> wife. I don't go in there. Things can. Yo. You can get hurt. <laughs> I just stay away. It's just back there for viewing on. It's a prop. Yeah. Her prop. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it'll be Isla Miss 12. That's what I'm doing. It's a blended scotch whiskey. So mm, that'll nice. be. I'll remember tomorrow I'll get it published. I actually did the video on Saturday, but it took a while. I edited it Sunday, and then I just kind of forgot about it. I mean, you don't it. care about us. You just don't oh, care about us. I don't care about you. <laughs> now, well, now, a good whiskey has to sit. A good whiskey video has to sit as well. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Well, well, I, uh, yeah, thank, thank you for uh, joining up tonight, uh, Robert. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, thank you. So for the uh, the Sun Brewing Company's uh, Whoopie Pie Stout, uh, I just something I didn't really mention was there is kind of a a, a little bit of a bitterness to this one with uh, kind of an earthy tone. Um, I just figured I'd throw that in there because I, I totally uh, neglected to say anything about any bitterness. Um, so super sweet, no. Sweeter than like maybe a coffee stout, yeah. yeah. But. Uh, I'm going to give it a 93 out of 100. Um, right, 93. I, one of the reasons it, behind that is because I had another milk stout that I was going to do. Um, and I hated that milk stout and picked this one up because I would had at least their peanut butter whoopie stout, which is fantastic. I wish I could have found that one because that, that that's a really good milk stout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, their peanut butter whoopie pie. Um, but, uh, yeah, this one, uh, 93 out of 100. Not, not too shabby. Uh, things coming up. Well, I mean, every uh, Tuesday through Friday, there's another video coming out. Um, besides my live, that happens here on Monday with the Multi Monday. Um, so, never really know what it's going to be. Most of the time, it's going to be a beer tasting of some sort uh, or a 50 point inspection. Point again. Uh, sometimes it'll be a brew day or whatever. But, uh, Multi Mondays, um, always on at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Mondays, uh, we have to uh, hopefully create a poll of four more beers that have not made it to a Multi Monday yet. So, if the panel can stick around for a little bit after this, um, that'd be great. Um, no way. Be posting the. Uh, be posting the. <laughs> I'll make my own poll. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, I need your beer, man, and drunk along. Oh no, what you got? I got yeah, you. Right. What link um, to the link to the poll be in the? But um, shout out real quick, puppy. Um, oh, you just sure can. To let people know that uh, um, 
this is the an IPA that I made um, uh, about th four weeks ago, and. Uh, I have a not only the live brew day. Don't go through the whole damn thing because it's like four and a half hours. But <laughs> I did a fermentation video that shows kind of a day by day what's happening with the fermentation when you're going from wort to actual beer, and it's kind of interesting. It's a it's probably ten minutes long, and if you want to, if you're ever uh, curious on how how beer ferments, I don't get get into the science of it. I go through the process of when it starts, it gets its peak and then it then it goes down and then kegging the beer. So this is the end result. I should do a grain to glass on it, which mm. I probably will since I'm talking about it now. But you get a chance to take a look at it. Uh, other videos I have, uh, some rescue stuff that's been going on. Like I said, the brew day. Um, I haven't put uh, barbecue stuff out much right now. So I should be doing that here shortly too. But yeah, take a look at it. Beer turned out really good, nice and rich. It's uh, mm. nice and carbonated, and cheers. Good looking beer, man. Yeah. Hell yeah. Nice, yeah. nice color, nice uh, taste. Yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And everybody, uh, if, if you <laughs> like beer, if you like beer, you should try to brew beer. Um, yeah. Uh, brewing is, uh, it's not all that difficult, really. It can be a little uh, little scary, a little nerve-wracking. Um, thinking, you know, I'm gonna mess. But really, it's. Uh, I mean, if if you can, uh, if you can like bake and follow recipes or anything like that, um, it's it's really not all that difficult. Uh, you can get really nerdy with it. I I tend to get a little bit nerdy when I when I homebrew, but a little bit. It's not that. Bad. <laughs> oh my God, come on. <laughs> well, if you got a product, I can't out. wait till I start brewing. Wow. You're gonna see how nerdy I get. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I'm just a little bit nerdy. I don't, I I don't have a, right I don't have this whole like you know. Brew house nerdy. And nerdy. Bumpy's a nerd though. He's a great dude though. You're a great dude. No, I just uh, I got uh, the water chemistry. When you start getting into, like the water chemistry and stuff like that, it's yeah, it's it's not always necessary, but sometimes it can improve in beer. Uh, whether or not you're gonna notice, I see a, difference. a huge difference from homebrew to homebrew, even with city even water. Even, you know, yeah, almost, Bumpy. Almost yeah. half the people who are here tonight are home brewers. Awesome, mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, well, I, I, am, I am in the non-home brewer group, but right. <laughs> but, uh, 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 yeah, just uh, I'll just say we're gonna uh, create a poll. Um, the poll is gonna be out uh, as soon as we can create it and put it up. It will be in the various hangout groups that I'm in. If you're not part of the hangout group, I will post it into the. Um, description of this video once that's up um, on YouTube. So you don't have to go back and watch this whole multi Monday. Yeah. Just click on the video and find the little description thing. Oh, and the poll will be in there. Um, so please get out and vote. Um, uh, this is probably one of the most important votes ever. So <laughs> get out there and vote. Um, but, uh, anyways, uh, we'll have four different beers that I haven't made to a multi Monday yet. Um, they may have been on the poll recently. Uh, people tend to have their, their favorites they want to push and get out there. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see what we come up with for the four beers. And the polling will come down uh, pretty much, we'll say, right around 8 p.m. on Wednesday because it's it comes down when Wildcard Wednesday is, is winding down. So yep. you'll have uh, basically tonight at some point through about, 8 p.m. Wednesday to get your voting in uh, for the uh, next the next beer for Multi Monday. But I want to appreciate my panel for everybody that showed up tonight. So awesome you. seeing all you guys. Thank you, Bumpy. Um, Thank you, Bumpy. Awesome, awesome chat bye -bye. tonight. Had uh, had quite a few views coming in. I also do want to say um, Micah's mix. Uh, he's going to be coming up live here very shortly. So check out Micah's mix. Um, I don't have any links to go to his channel, but uh, if you go basically and do a search in YouTube, uh, you can type in Micah's Mix and mm -hmm. you should be able to find his live. Um, also, cheers to uh, Todd and everybody, uh, 21090 Todd for, for popping in. Um, it's awesome. So, uh, yeah. I will see, see you guys all around. I'm on everybody else's streams throughout the week um, that I can get into. I can't get on everybody's because oh, yeah. lots of times they overlap. People do certain things, and I kind of uh, I kind of do certain shows that I'm 
I'm accustomed to joining, but uh, try to try to reach out and uh, and see everybody's uh, dreams and lives and stuff that they got going on. Um, everybody in the chat, you got Blake TV, uh, you know, uh, Micah's Mix, two ten ninety. Everybody's got something going on this week. So, uh, but thank you all for joining. It was an awesome night, um, and we will catch you on the next 